In the previous episode, you saw something deep about human beings and science. What was that? You saw that when as humans, we are not happy with the messiness of the real world. You know, what do we do? We just kind of imagine that messiness doesn't exist and make up a simple quantity that's useful to us. And what was that quantity? It was average speed or the cruise speed, right? You remember that. Now, that's kind of what we do in physics, which is we just make up quantities whenever we want to. And the only thing the quantity has to be for it to exist is to be useful. Now, sometimes though, we don't just want to know who won the race, right? Sometimes we want some messiness. I can give you an example. Imagine that you were told the hare and the tortoise story by your grandmother when you were a young kid. And she told you, hey, a hare and a tortoise started the race and uh, the tortoise won. That's the worst story ever told. Nobody's ever going to spread that story. Nobody cares about that story, right? What makes that story worthwhile? is the fact that there were ups and downs in the story, right? The hair started fast, then it got lazy, it slept, the tortoise kept going, trudging along. And then finally, when the hair woke up, even though it walked very, very fast, it ran very fast, it couldn't beat the tortoise. All of those ups and downs is what makes the story worthwhile. So a good story usually has a shape. Ups and downs that make it worthwhile. So what if you actually want the ups and downs to be captured in a picture so that you can actually tell the story using just one picture? Now you might wonder what do I mean when I say a shape of a story. There's a brilliant, brilliantly funny, amazing video by Kurt Vonnegut. He's one of the most famous authors of the 20th century called The Shape of Stories. We'll send a link to you. Watch that video and I'll talk to you more about that later. But at the end of this episode, what you will be able to do is take a story like The Hair and the Tortoise and be able to put the entire story's movie into one single picture called a motion graph. But what does that really look like? Let's see. But before understanding what motion graphs really are, what's a graph in general? Like a graph is just basically a data compression method or a data compression technology. Let's imagine lots of things are changing, right? Like some two things are changing with respect to each other. And over time, lots of things are happening, but you don't want to watch the movie. You don't have time, you are lazy. You're like, hey, just give me one single picture. Whenever that happens, you wanna show two quantities changing with respect to each other, but you don't wanna look at it over time, the movie, you just want to look at a single snapshot, we use a graph. I have like this really famous story of mine um, that I keep using in all my classes, how I talk about how curiosity of students changes with time as they grow in the grades. Like go to six standard classrooms and I've done this, like every student is like super curious, so curiosity level super high. You know, this on this line, we've measured the curiosity, it's like super high. And then over here, that's sixth grade, right? And then if I take seventh grade, it's like pretty much the same, usually. Eighth grade, it's pretty much the same. And then in ninth, it starts dipping. In 10th, it starts dipping even more. and in uh, 11th or 12th, all the way near the board exam, they just like, like virtually uh, nobody is as curious as they were when they began. So if I were to plot this, the curiosity versus the grade, and we don't know why this happens in school, or maybe we do, what you get is called a curiosity versus grade graph, or curiosity versus time graph. What did it do? Took two things, curiosity and grade, and showed how it varies with time. So essentially, uh, whenever you're compressing this movie into a picture, that's what we call a graph. But now let's get into a specific case of it, a motion or a position time graph. What is a position time graph? To really understand that, let's actually go back to our world of the ant that's a prisoner of a string that can only move up or down. So our baby ant is sleeping on the string. It's at rest, it's sleeping. It's feeling particularly lazy today. If you wake it up, it'll say, today I feel like not doing anything. So the ant then wakes up and then it starts slowly moving uh, up. Uh, why and all, we don't know. It goes up for a while for a few seconds and then goes somewhere there and then it stops for a while and then it's like sleeping again because like I said, today it's feeling really, really lazy and then it's gonna come back down again even more slowly and then finally come back to where it started and then just continue sleeping. It's one of the laziest ants ever, right? Ants are usually known for being hardworking. But if you wanna imagine how a graph of this so-called serious position time graph of it would look like or a motion graph of it would look like, one of the easiest ways to do that that I find is imagine that this ant knows dipped in some ink and as it's going on that string, no, we dip it in ink and basically what we do, we keep a paper behind it and then as it's moving up without telling it, we just move the string with time. The ant is just moving up but if you were to imagine dragging that string, you'll get a some trail, right, some mark on that paper, what'll that look like? That'll look like a diagonal line, right, as it's going up. Now is the ant actually moving diagonally like that? No, it's not, right? No, 
the ant is a prisoner of the string. It can only go up and down. We are just imagining moving that line so that we can draw this picture better. So what are you doing? The ant's going up, it's dipped in ink, and you just drag this, drag this piece of string, you get a trail. This trail is what we call a graph. It has a serious sounding name, you know, a graph or a position time graph or all of that. But all it is, is if you had just imagined you dipped this ant in ink and as you moved it, whatever trail this ant would have left, that's all we call a graph. So now let's watch it again. Okay, it's going up. That's what it looks like till it goes up. And then what does it do? It sleeps. When it's sleeping, what would the trail look like? You're just dragging, dragging, dragging. Is anything changing? Is the ant going up or down? No. So you're just going to get a flat line as it's sleeping. And then finally, the ant wakes up, but this time it's going down. So each time it goes down, if you drag, drag the trail, what will you get? Stop for a moment, think about it. Till here you saw what the shape looks like, right? What will it look like after this? Did you think about it? That's right, as it's moving down, slowly, slowly, each step as it's coming down, on when you drag it, it'll look like a line downwards like that, right? So that picture that you got as it came down and started sleeping again, this picture, this trail of dipping an ant on ink is what we call a position time graph. So no matter how somebody tries to make this sound scary to you, all you know is if I dip it in ink and drag it across, what picture I get? That's what a graph really is. Now the advantage here is that if I look at this picture, if somebody just gave me this picture, like I said, graphs are just data compression technologies, right? If I look at it, I can tell the story, right? I don't have to see the ant, I don't have to watch this entire movie. There's a single picture in front of me and I can go, oh, so the ant woke up, after like two seconds, it was sleeping for two seconds, it woke up. And then for the next five seconds, it went upwards. How do I know that? Because took, 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 every second, if I look, its position is more than what it was before, right? For five seconds, it did that. And then the lazy ant slept for another six seconds. That's really lazy. Because how do I know it slept? Because I know it's like position not changing, not changing, not changing. It slept, slept there exactly where it was. And then it's coming back, I can see. How do I know that? because its position is decreasing, decreasing with every single second. And it took seven seconds to come back all the way and then sleep again. So you look at the picture, you can tell a story, you can look at the story and draw a picture. Now what I want you to do in the next few stations is go learn two things, two skills. One is, can you look at the movie and draw these graphs on your own? And second, can you look at graphs and tell more about the story? But before you jump into the next stations and start your active learning, I want you to do one more super active thing, play with and learn. I built like a tiny graph-like thing over here with code. And uh, what it does is essentially, uh, as you move your mouse up and down, as you can clearly see, it can only move up and down, it kind of draws what would be a graph if you were just dragging. For example, if I just keep it at rest, if I'm not doing anything as the ant, you just get a flat line. As I move up, you can start seeing what happens. And if I start moving down, you can see what happens, right? You can see that. I want you to take this and play with it. Get a sense for what these graphs are actively before you're gonna jump in and do more such things. And also ask your learning coach for the code because as you know, you can start playing with it, change the details of it and see how this really works.